Hello and welcome to the prep um, workout for the Deepening Asana Experience Program for the Meditative Postures, um, Meditative Postures 1. There are 12 postures in this uh, three-day program and they involve a lot of hip opening and back bending. So they include wheel and lotus and camel, all very challenging postures. So I created this sort of prep um, video or home workout for you to do to prepare to get into for the program so that first you can really gain the benefits, get the fruits of the practice that we talk about in every program and not walk away so sore. So I hope this is helpful. I, what I did was take all 12 postures and list the preparatory poses and put together sort of a brief workout. So I'm not gonna include pranayama, I'm not gonna do the meditation piece, but this is really to focus on us obtaining the energy to, to get the fruits of the practice. And that is in the beginning of each program. If you notice the invocation, this is actually from the Katha Upanishads, and there's a prayer at the beginning of each manual or an invocation. This says, Om, Ma, may Brahman protect us. May Brahman bestow upon us the fruit of knowledge. May we obtain the energy to acquire knowledge. May, we, may what we study reveal the truth. May we cherish no ill will toward each other. Om, peace, peace, peace. So that's my intention is to give a workout uh, for you to do and always take care of yourself. The only thing you'll need for this uh, preparation practice is two, bro two blocks might be helpful. Of course, any blankets to pad for your knees. I'm gonna start in puppy. Okay, so come to your mat. Separate your knees about as wide as the mat. Bring your feet together and stretch your arms out in front so that your hips are high and your forehead can rest on the ground. A puppy very much, of course, like down dog, it is an inversion. So you want to allow your spine to relax in this shape because again, there are a lot of back bending poses. So feel that release, the support of your head. If you can come, once your elbows are you know, anchored to the floor, if you can slightly pull back to give yourself a little bit more you know, traction in your spine. Relax your jaw and the root of your tongue. Use your nose for dirga breath. Make sure the breath is full. Deep into the bottom of your lungs, broad into your ribs. Fill yourself up completely and then exhale just as deliberately. Remember the um, and sutras also tell us that the posture should be stable and sweet. So use your breath as a barometer as we move through this. Always keep your breath full and deep. If you cannot breathe smooth, it's probably an indication you should not be doing whatever it is you're doing. Okay, pull yourself up into table, into all fours. Bring your knees together a little closer under your hips. And table pose as you inhale, lift your chin and tail into a cat. A cow posture as you exhale round into cat. Now move back and forth a few times. Pay special attention to uh, the areas that you know are a little harder to get into. For example, in cow, um, feel more release in your chest. Create a little more um, you know mobility in your middle spine. And in cat. It's easy to get your middle spine to round. Get a little more rounding in your lumbar spine. So maybe rock back slightly to feel that. Now come to center with your knees together. Let's start on the left leg. Reach your left knee way out back behind you. Rotate your left knee to the side. Bring it in toward your armpit, in toward your belly, and then tap the other knee. Reverse. Bring it into your belly, up to your armpit, high to the side. Lift the knee way out back and then tap your other knee. Let's do that three more times. Breathe deeply back, side to the armpit, to your belly and tap your knee. So you really wanna feel reversing the direction each time that you're generating this giant circle with your knee. So you're articulating around 
in the largest range of motion you can. I'm going to learn it two more times. Deep, full breath, straight, strong arms. If you need to, you could lower the right elbow down toward the ground, reverse. Also be sure while you're circling, you're not shifting your body weight over in the opposite direction, in this case to the right. One more time, up to your belly, out wide to the side, and back, finish this off. It's out back, wide to the side, really deep full breaths. Strong, stable body, last one in the opposite direction. Nice. And then step that left foot up to your left pinky finger. And step it, it's like a wide lizard lunge. Let your hips sink nice and low. With your hands under your shoulders, no, this lotus posture again is in these 12 postures that we'll be diving into. So sway a little bit here and really let your hips like a hammock sinks between your legs. Now get a good plant with your left foot and your left knee is probably right there against your left shoulder. Your toes will probably turn out just a little bit. Bring your left hand behind your head. Press into everything that's on the ground actually, your right hand, your left foot, open your left elbow up. So I'm going to do a few twists here. As you exhale, aim your elbow toward your wrist. So you inhale, open the left elbow, and then exhale as you aim your elbow toward your right wrist. And you're going to get a little upper body strength as well as you bend the right elbow to reach your left elbow. Oh, I just got a back crack there. As low as you can. Keep the left knee parked over your left ankle. Take one more deep, full breath here. And exhale, lower, good. Come back to center, place your left hand down. Step the left knee back where it came from. And take a few tick-tocks here, side to side. Good idea probably to keep your knees together and let your hips sway. Only as far as feels good to you. If they can tap the floor, let them tap the floor. Maybe add the ujjayi breath here. And then we'll come to center and do all of this on the other side. So knees together, straight strong arms. Lift your right knee out back behind you. Okay, try to keep your spine pretty still so you're not arching your back. Open the right knee wide to the side. Bring it in toward your shoulder and then tight to your belly and tap your other knee. Reverse into your belly up to your shoulder, high to the side. Rotate the thigh bone so the knee lifts out back and then tap your knee. Three more in both directions, out back, wide to the side, into your shoulder and your belly and tap your knee. And really pay attention not only to the knee that's moving, trying to get the greatest range of motion possible, but what is stable. Right? What is really supporting you in order to create this big range of motion? Now it's easy to dump weight, keep going, bring it into your belly, high to your shoulder, wide to the side, out back, and tap your knee. Easy to dump weight into your hands. If you feel too much body weight in your hands, maybe just, and it's not much, you just shift back a little bit so that you're pressing more into your left knee. And do one more in both directions. Keep your neck long, breath full, lifted high behind, wide to the side, tight to your shoulder, into your belly, and then last one. Reversing. Step the left, right foot up to your right pinky finger and go as, you know, as far forward as you can. Usually your fingers and your toes will be in line when, you know, out front there. Let your hips sink really low. I always like swaying a little bit here side to side. I always make it, you know, I do feel like I'm creating a, you know, a bridge, like a really strong bridge has um, both flexibility, it's dynamic, and it's also very stable. So as your hips sink, let a sway happen, deep full breath. And then find a good position for the right leg. So your toes probably turned out just a little bit and your knees stacked over your ankle. Open the right elbow up, place your hand all the way behind your head, like cup your head with your hand. Open your right elbow up, and then aim it toward your left wrist. 
Inhale to open and get really broad there. And then exhale to aim your elbow towards your wrist. Let's so take your time. Just breathe in, full breath in to open, full breath out to rotate. And find the greatest range of motion without you know, creating any tension. There's a lot of effort there. Press down strong into the ground to, um, you know, to obtain that big range. One more time. Inhale to open and exhale to empty and land. Good. Bring your right hand down. Step your right knee back where it came from. Now take a few big circles with your hips. If the tick-tock felt better to you, you could certainly stay right there and do the tick-tock. Deep, full breaths. And now reverse in the other direction. Really, you know, you're working to find the greatest range of motion you can here. So if it's available, let your hips come way out in front of your knees. Let them sink. It's almost like a little up dog there. And then, of course, they go way back. Now come to center and lift up tall into kneeling. Get your knees directly underneath your hips. It's like you're standing out of your knees. This circle of joy for mainly shoulders, right? Clasp your fingers, knuckles forward, shoulder blades apart. As you inhale, lift up. And then as you exhale, open your arms way out back behind. Clasp your fingers, reach knuckles low, and lift your collarbones up. Let's do that three more times. Exhale, shoulder blades apart. Inhale as you lift, let your shoulder blades rise. Exhale, and back. it's like a backward hug, reach way back there. Clasp your fingers tightly, press your palms all the way together because we'll use a fair amount of um, wrist strength as well this next uh, training. Knuckles forward, shoulder blades apart. Lift and elevate your shoulder blades. Hug your shoulder blades. Clasp your fingers, reach down and really lift your collarbones up. One more time here. Press forward, shoulder blades apart. As the shoulder blades lift, let that also lift your ribs so you feel your waistline's really long. As your shoulder blades hug, easy neck there. Feel the broadening across your chest. Clasp your palms tightly. Knuckles reach down. Now hold this for about three breaths. While you're pressing your knuckles down, you can reach your hands away from your bottom. Lift your collarbones up and press your hips also slightly forward. Really work to you know, stand tall out of your knees so you're not leaning onto your feet. Take this one more deep, full breath. And then release your hands. Now this next one's where the blocks might come in handy. I'm gonna um, keep your blocks close by, probably on the middle position that's gonna be most stable. Lift into kneeling and step your right foot forward into a lunge, but it's a 90 degree lunge. So your front knee over your front ankle, back knee under your back hip. Now sit back onto your left heel, and then you might need to pull your right foot a little closer, okay? So it's like hero pose, but you're just sitting on one heel. Now if you press into your blocks, you're gonna stand on this right foot and pull your hips forward and up. Now hold that for about five breaths. If you don't need your blocks, you could have your fingertips to the floor, right? You could also have your palms to the floor. And the lower your hands are, the more stretch and deep opening you're gonna get in the front of your left thigh and left hip. Take two more full breaths, whatever version feels best to you today. You're also rooting into your right heel and really working to Feel the strength in the hamstring to pull your hips forward and up. And then lower your hips, crawl forward, and lift back up into kneeling. Bring the right knee back. Step your left foot forward, not too far forward, because you're going to sit back again on your right heel. And I know this is not available for a lot of folks, um, but keep working on that. To sit back, you might, you know, pad behind your knee. If you need a blanket back there, be good to your knee though. Don't want, again, breath. You always want to be able to breathe smooth. So use your blocks if they're helpful. Stand on the left foot, pull. So you're not only pressing down into the blocks, but you're pushing down into this foot and kind of pulling your hips forward and up. Once your hips are forward and up, 
the right knee, the, the whatever knee is behind, in this case the right, might want to come up off the ground. You got to root the right knee down strong and really lift your collarbones the same way you just did in Circle of Joy. And again, if palms to the floor works for you, lower your hands or your fists. Take two more full breaths here. Really drive your right knee down, lift your collarbones high, and then lower your hips. And you can come forward into that kneeling position that we started, lower, uh, bring the left knee back. Now this is a modification of a rabbit pose, so it's gonna be the opposite of what you just did. Bring your hand, elbows to the ground. If you're familiar with dolphin, it's a lot like dolphin, elbows about shoulder width apart. Clasp your fingers, your pinky finger extended. Let your head come down as if you were gonna put the top of your head to the floor. But if you can, um, depends on the length of your arms, if you can keep the top of your head away from the floor, do that. Press into your elbows and you're on your knees. Now round your spine, just like cat. And once you really round, your head's hanging you press your elbows firmly into the ground. Feel that you're pulling your elbows and your knees toward each other. So it's an exact, you know, counter pose for what you just did. You're pressing down into the ground strong with both knees and both elbows and trying to pull your elbows and your knees toward each other. And at the same time, lift your waistline up toward the ceiling. Take two more full breaths. And then lower your hips towards your heels. You can reach your arms out in front in a child's pose. And be very soft for just a few breaths there. So relax. And then lift into all four into tables, tuck your toes, lift your hips back and up into down dog. And then play in your down dog, do whatever feels really good right now. If you want to pedal out, or maybe shift your hips side to side. Shake your head. Get a good spread of your fingers. Be good to your thumb. Let your thumb go wherever it wants to go. But your fingers are you know, wide enough that you have a little color of your mat between your hands. Pre I mean your fingers rather. Press your fingerprints down. Be light in the heel of your hands. Keep stretching your hips way up and back. And as you come to stillness, press your fingerprints down but lift your toe prints up and soften your knees a tiny bit. Take two more deep, full breaths here. Really deep, dirga breath, or a ujjayi sound if you'd like. And walk your feet up to your hands, into forward fold, into uttanasana. Root strong into your heels, anchor your, uh, spread your toes wide, and sandwich your belly onto your thighs. Now step your left leg back into lunge. Stabilize there. Lengthen your spine so you pull your chest forward. Reach your arms out back. And rise into warrior one. And in your warrior one, maybe soften your back knee a little bit to get your hips underneath of you. So you're not tipping your pelvis forward. You're trying to get your hips under. Press through your back heel. Again, feel the opening in the front of your, you know, your left hip, and there's a strength in the right uh, hamstring and glute again. Now bend your elbows into cactus, and bring your left arm low, right arm high for eagle arms. So lots of opening in your, you know, strength and mobility in your shoulder girdle for a lot of these poses that we'll work with. Hug your el if eagle arms doesn't work, hug your elbows together. Once you get your elbows together or you wrap your elbows, reach your elbows forward. Keep pulling your hips, um, or your hips are level. And once your hips are parked, 
press your left heel back as strongly as you can. Maybe you start to lift your elbows up into a little back bend. Let's take one more deep, full breath. Nice. And then release your arms and hands on your hips. Open your back heel, lower the left heel to the floor for warrior two. And sink deep into the lunge. Arms open wide in side warrior or the uh, part of your Vajrasana, right? So you gaze over your front middle finger. Now, sense here the opening, especially in your right thigh. Your right thigh is externally rotated. Your left thigh is internally rotated. And you're trying to you know, sink deep into your legs. Wrap your left arm behind your back. And take three more deep breaths. If you can flip the front palm, stretch it straight up. Now keep the right knee reaching forward and reverse warrior, which is sometimes called exalted warrior. Now as you reach up and back here, breathe deeply. Keep your left waistline long. Slow motion, windmill your hands around to the inside of your front foot and then turn to the side of your mat into wide-angled fold. And once you're here, walk your feet maybe a little bit wider. Remember, we want lots of hip openings. You should feel a pretty generous inner thigh stretch here. Maybe your toes, feet are parallel. Maybe your toes turn in slightly, but press down equally into the whole surface of both feet. Hands under your shoulders, spines nice and long. Now, you wiggle your hips side to side. So that doesn't mean bend your knees. Keep your body weight equal in your feet. You're pressing down strong into your hands and your feet, keeping your spine long. And just kind of a little seesaw of your hips side to side. Let's take one more deep full breath. And then if your feet are wide, heel toe them in, pivot back around into lunge to the right where you started. Step up to forward fold. Sandwich your belly on your thighs. Press down strong into your heels. Relax the weight of your head. Remember you use the back side of your body to lift up. So open your arms wide, press through your heels out to come all the way up, a little back bend, and then exhale, bring your hands home to your heart. From this standing position, stay in your mountain. And we'll work with balance with a half standing half moon. So I'm going to do the clasp version where your arms are overhead, you clasp hold of your elbows and pull. You might actually heel toe your feet a little bit wider apart, maybe the fleshy part of your hips. Press your hips out to the right, reach your upper body way over toward the left. Three deep, strong ujjayi breaths. Remember any of these side bending postures? You are laterally flexing your spine, but your goal is to stay very long in this bottom waistline. And be cautious if you have um, osteoporosis, you definitely want to use caution in side bending and in twisting. Always find length and move with uh, awareness. Rise back up. Open your arms out wide. Backward hug. Clasp your hands behind in Yoga Mudrasana. Knuckles down, collarbones high. Now bend your knees and fold your belly onto your thighs as tightly as you possibly can. Reach your knuckles high. Stay here for three strong Ujjayi breaths. Press your palms together. As you anchor your heels down, lift your hips up, but don't let your belly leave your thighs. Now reach back through your knuckles, press down into your feet, come up with a very long spine. Ah, and release your arms. Hmm. Let's do the other side. Reach your arms out and up. Catch hold of your elbows up overhead. Now that's quite active. Once you catch your forearms or your elbows, whatever you can grab, pull. Pull to feel engagement. Press down strong into both feet. Press your hips to the left, so we're going the other way. And then your upper body to the right. And I don't know if I said that mirror or the other opposite side, but 
For me, I'm going right with my hips, upper body left. Make sure you get the other side. Breathe deeply. As you're pulling on your elbows, you know, your head's framed equally between your arms. Make sure your neck feels um, spacious, not congested. Take one more deep, full breath. And then on your inhale, press through your feet to come all the way up. Now get this circle of joy again. You really want to feel strength in your shoulder girdle. Open your arms wide, backward hug. Clasp your hands behind your tail. Reach your knuckles down. Lift your collarbones up. And then take that fold again. Belly all the way over to your thighs. Sandwich tight. Use the Ujjayi breath. Now for me here, I like to feel a slight inward spiral of my thighs. That may help you to open up more into your hips, deeper into your hips. And then press your palms tightly together. Knuckles reach up to the ceiling and way up overhead. Now work to come out of the pose. Press down into your heels, reach back through your knuckles, and come all the way up with a really long spine. And once you stand tall, release your hands. Ah. All right, we're going to find that warrior sequence on the other side. So root down into your mountain, into your heels. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up. As you exhale, stay long and fold forward. And this time we'll step your right leg back into a high lunge. Stabilize there. Reach out back behind in slow motion. So feel the work to come up. There's a lot of strength building in that lifting. Once you're lifted, frame your ears with your arms. Soften your back knee a little bit to be certain that your hips are underneath of you. So you're not arching your low back. You're trying to get your low back long. And once you get your hips underneath and they feel level, then press it's like a little tug of war, right? Your hips are parked and you push back through your right heel, sink down into the strength of your front leg to create the maximum stretch or opening and strength in the front hip, in the front of that right hip. Bend your elbows into cactus. The right arm will go low, oh, sorry, left arm will go low, right arm will go high. But wrap your elbows so whatever leg is forward, I usually go with that arm on the bottom. Reach your elbows forward. Really uh, breathe deeply. So you fill that space between your shoulder blades with breath. Now if you want to do a little back bend, reach your elbows forward and up, but try not to collapse in your low back. So you're really trying to lift because remember wheel and camel, they all require more strength and um, lift in your middle back. And then unwind your arms, hands on your hips, open your hips to warrior two. So land your back heel. And the toes turn in slightly. Sink deep into the front lunge as deep as you can. Body weight equal in both feet, hips level. So not you know, kicking out that back hip. Get them underneath of you. Open your arms. Remember the hydrants that we did in the very beginning. This is the outward rotation that we worked with in that hydrant position of the front thigh and inward rotation of the back thigh. Sense those muscles deep in your hips. That's what's going to help with lotus pose. Flip your front palm. Wrap your right hand behind your back. Reach for your front hip crease. Stretch your left arm straight up. Now stay with everything that I've described so far. So you press down strong into both feet. Outward rotation in the front thigh, inward rotation in the back thigh. Hips are level, spine is long. Now get your up, your exalted warrior. Reach up and back. You're not sinking back and falling back. It's lifting up more out of your hips. One more deep breath. Now, windmill your hands around to the inside of your front foot. Turn to the wide edge of your mat again. And now we're going to lower for frog. So bend both, uh, one knee at a time and lower your knees. And like I mentioned, a blanket might be helpful for frog. And if you don't need, you know, if you need padding, go right ahead and do that. Walk your knees as wide as you possibly can. Mandukasana, the frog posture. Lower your elbows. 
and take five, maybe seven Ujjayi breaths. And your goal here also is long spine, really long spine. If you can get your toes to point out to the side and your heels or your ankles in line with your knees. So you basically have you know, three 90 degree angles at your hip, your knee and your ankle. I like spreading toes wide to keep my, my feet and ankle muscles quite active. And then elongate your spine. So imagine your favorite person behind you pulling your hips back and your other favorite person in front of you pulling your head forward. It's like a telescoping antenna with your spine. Take two more strong Ujjayi breaths. And then to release palm frog, climb up onto your hands. Ooh, slowly bend your knees and, maybe, and heel t or walk your knees in slowly toward each other. And then you end up in table. Now lower onto your belly in a prone position. Hands rest on your fore under your forehead. Bend your knees and let them sweep side to side. Deep, full breath. I'm going to open again through the front of your body, through your shoulders this time. Open your arms in T. Turn your head to the left so your right cheek is on the floor. I'm going to keep that right palm, both palms down. Keep the right arm exactly where it is. Bend your left elbow so your hand comes in like a little kickstand and help yourself to roll to your right side. And try to roll over as far as you can. Women with um, large chest, this is sometimes uncomfortable. Um, try to get off of your chest and onto your shoulder the best you can. And then bend your bottom knee and um, it'll come forward in front of you for a little assistance with balance. And point your top knee up toward the ceiling. So the bent, both knees bent left foot is flat. You're trying to open the left knee as far as you can. So a big shoulder, it's twisting in your spine, um, and a big shoulder stretch. And you can keep the left hand right there, press into it to help to you know, keep pressing over onto your right side, or wrap your left arm behind your back. Take two more deep, it gets weird with your head here. Sometimes people like a blanket, you know, underneath their head. Um, but if it's okay, we'll be here for short, you know, just two more breaths. So you let your head relax the best way possible and open your knee and your top shoulder way out back. And then release all of that. Bring your knees together. Bring your left hand around, roll to your belly and head under your hand or hands under your forehead this time maybe circle your feet around and reverse hmm. you can also do i hear these windshield wipers where both feet are going in the same direction but i like the idea of european windshield wipers where both feet open and both feet cross so it's like a crisscross action internal and external rotation of your thighs. Again, an excellent thing to practice. Okay, we'll do this twist on the other side. So open your arms in T and turn your head to the right. Let your left cheek, this is really good for cervical rotation too, so you let your left cheek and left ear sink to the ground and bend your right elbow. Use that to roll off of your chest onto your side. Now if the arm behind you, if it really doesn't feel good and you need to lower the arm a little bit lower, so if, you know, if shoulder height doesn't feel good to you, maybe I should show it this way too. So if this shoulder height doesn't feel good, you could come back and lower the arm at a lower diagonal and that might feel better. But it is a big opening through the front of your body. This will be quite helpful for camel and for wheel. Um, and then bend both knees. 
So the bottom knee coming forward creates a nice little uh, platform for you. And you could let your top leg rest, but since we're working with lotus posture also throughout the program, if you, you know, hope and point the top knee up, you know, feel strength in the outside of the hip in order to get that position that creates stretch on the inner thigh. Anything you like with this top arm, you could wrap it behind your back. Deep, full breath. I'm going to work with a couple of other back bends here as well. So unwind. This is almost like a twisted locust. It's more of a yin pose, but again, it's a very helpful posture to open the front of your body. Now come to center, prop up into sphinx for just about five breaths. Any um, you know position with your elbows that feels good to you that can be under your shoulders, uh, you can move a little forward. You definitely want to make certain you're not dumping weight into your low back. So try to find the extension more in your um, middle back. Work to pull your chest forward. And it's more energetically, I would never say tuck your tail, but energetically feel like you're reaching your tailbone toward your heels and pulling your pubic bone toward your nose. And most times that helps us to, you know, elongate through your low back. Take one more deep breath. And then release all of that. Now, left hand under your forehead. Reach back with your right hand for half bow, Ardha Dhanurasan. Um, catch your right ankle or the top of your foot or maybe your shin. Draw your heel in close to your bottom. Lift your head off of your hand. Now as I build this, you stop anywhere along the way, of course, where you feel um, you know, an appropriate level of strength in the back side of your body and stretch in the front side. Now if you can lift your left arm and bring that hand behind, catch your right foot with both hands and then kick your toes up toward the ceiling and let that lift your chest. Now again here, feel your pubic bone pulling toward the floor, or toward your nose, and maybe you lift your left leg. Take one more deep breath. And then slowly release, relax, and hands under your forehead, be soft. One more deep breath. And let's do this on the other side. So bend your left knee now and reach back with your left hand. Catch whatever you can. Of course, be certain that your hips are pressing down. And relax as much as you can. So this, the postures you know, eventually want to become um, easy. Know, as easy as possible. So that means releasing any unnecessary tension. So notice where you might be, you know, uh, energy robbed, you know, energy where there's unnecessary, especially your neck, neck and shoulders. Because in bow, especially the um, arm that's holding on is passive. So the strength of your leg kicks that, uh, pulls the arm behind your body. Lift your head a little bit off your hand. Reach back with your right hand. And grab the same, both hands, same foot. Get a good grip with your hands, but let your arms and your shoulders be loose so we can free up any kind of wasted, you know, effort there. And then use the strength of your leg to kick your foot up, lift your thigh, and let that lifting help you to lift your chest. So it's really a lot of work in your legs. Easy neck, maybe your right leg lifts. One more full breath. And 
then slowly release and relax. Oh. Now let's climb up into all fours. And once you're in table pose, maybe side bend a little bit or jump rope your ribs around like you're scraping the inside of a barrel with your rib cage. Deep full breath. And then I'm gonna go back to hero pose. So sit on your heels and this will be a twisted hero. Okay, so I know that again, this position is not available for everyone. If you need props, maybe under your ankles or behind your knees, do what you need to do. Make sure you can breathe deeply. So your spine, very long. Bring your hands to Anjali Mudra, to prayer pose. Very much like twisted squat. And you keep your thumbs right at your breastbone and stretch out and over your thighs and then twist. Maybe get your elbow in place first. It's probably in front of your knees somewhere and then press into your elbows to help yourself to bring your chest around. And say hello to my cat, my very old cat. Now position your elbow so that you can find lots of length in your spine as well. So it's not too close. It might need to be further away. That just depends on the length of your torso. Work to get your shoulders um, perpendicular towards your hips. And one elbow points down, one elbow points up. Breathe deeply. Ooh, another back crack. Work your sitting bones, hips pull back, back, back as the tips of your ears reach forward. Take one more full breath. And then release that. You can bring your hands down to help yourself to press up. And pause for a moment to breathe. And then the other side, so long spine. It helps sometimes to hug your thighs together. It gives you a better base, I, I believe. Reach out, 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 and begin to spiral and twist and aim your elbow to the point where you feel like you can help yourself to twist and your thumbs in line with your breastbone. And once you're there, your work is not done. Hug your thighs, reach your hips back, stretch the crown of your head forward. And when, with all of that spiraling and lengthening and hugging and rooting down, fill the shape with breath. Deep, deep, full breaths. Nice, and then release the twist. Hands down to the ground. Help yourself to come back up. We'll move into pigeon. Bring your hands forward into table and your right knee comes up to your right wrist. Swivel your right foot over toward your left hip. Begin to glide your left leg back. Remember pigeon is more, you want to feel it in your hip, not your knee. If you feel too much in your knee, Unswivel your foot a little bit. Just play with the position of the front foot. It may not need to go, you know, so far forward or so far over to the side. Keep your hips square. And meaning you no know, dipping off to the side. And once you're there, walk your fingers a little bit forward and soften your elbows. Pull your chest forward. And really press down into your front shin. I think it's helpful to carve the outer edge of your foot into the floor, like your outer ankle and your outer pinky, pinky edge of your foot. Soft neck. Take two more deep, full breaths.
And then to release pigeon, tuck your back toes under, crawl the back knee in, unswivel your front foot, slide your knee back to where it came from. Pause there for a few tick tocks, maybe a cat cow, maybe circle, anything that feels good. And then pigeon on the left. Left knee to left wrist, swivel your left foot across, glide your right leg back. And it's like a split, but your legs are spiraling. So in split, your legs in Hanumanasana, Hanumanasana the um, split posture, your legs are neutral. So there's no rotation. In pigeon, you're splitting your legs with the front thigh outwardly rotated and the back thigh inwardly rotated. So it's a big hip opener. It's fabulous preparation for lotus. And the back bending piece can help us with wheel and camel. So with your fingertips forward, pull isometrically to draw your chest forward. Easy neck, really easy neck. And then what if you were to press more into the top of the back foot and more into the shin on the front leg? Use the Ujjayi sound. Two more full breaths. And to release pigeon, walk your hands back just a bit. Tuck the back toes to crawl the back knee in. Unswivel your front foot and slide back. Have a seat in the middle of your mat. This is more of a, again, a yin pose, a little passive. Feet together. And you're welcome to work with Baddha Konasana, the bound angle, if that's, um, you know, this is a very similar pose. It's more active in bound angle feet together and in bound angle you would help to pull yourself forward so it's strong engagement to push feet together and to open knees i'm going to suggest we be a little more passive toward the end of this practice here in butterfly you may not need your feet as close so it is more of a yin pose and it's to help release the uh, more uh, where your spine plugs into your pelvis your lumbopelvic girdle always keep your spine long Reach up and over into a more passive butterfly or bound angle. And now we'll stay here for about eight, maybe 10 slow breaths. Really just allowing you know, your knees to drop down toward the ground. Your elbows like fishing weights, arms can be inside your legs or outside your legs and your head as well. Again, with herniation in your discs or osteoporosis, forward bending is contraindicated. So you would be better off to stay long. You could put a bolster, you know, to prop your forehead between your forehead and your feet or work with bound angle, which is always a better place with um, spinal issues, more engagement. Take three more full, slow breaths. And use your hands, push down into the ground to help you stack yourself up. We're going to make our way onto our back. So bring your knees to point up in your center of your mat. Roll down onto your back for bridge. So heels close to your bottom. And maybe your feet, usually we work hip distance with bridge. Maybe feet a little bit wider, like the width of your flesh of your hips and is it possible for you to touch your ankles with your fingers or touch your heels and then if you were to snuggle your shoulder blades underneath could you get your feet close enough 
that you're able to grab your ankles. So you have a bind. Now if all that's working, that really depends you know, on so many things, what's going on in your body, how long your arms are, how much flexion you can get in your knees. Um, be certain that your feet are pointing forward the, for the most part and your knees are over your ankles. So you wouldn't want your knees to collapse in nor to fall out. Now press into your feet and lift your hips, lift up into a bound bridge. And once you have your ankles, you can really pull to lift your chest even more. To get the bend, the back bending, the arc, to be more equally distributed along your spine. Now always keep your head centered in bridge. Press down strong into your heels. And the press points for bridge are your pubic bone and your hip bones and your breastbone, your sternum. Lift your sternum, lift your hip bones, lift your pubic bone and take one more full breath. Pull, if you have hold of your ankles, pull. To release, release your hands from your ankles, lift your heels and slowly let your spine come down. And once your hips land, bring your feet together again, let your knees open wide to the side. Let your arms open in cactus. No control of your breath. Let your body breathe its own rhythm of breath here. And then working with fish, Matsyasana. Bring one knee to point up and then the other. Slide your legs out long on the mat. Press your thighs firmly together. Flex your feet and spread your toes. Bring your arms down at your sides. Clasp your thighs with your hands. And your, real, your hands, arms are you know, active and your hands are working too. So clutch your thighs and pull, pull with your hands. Press into your elbows, lift your chest and come to rest on the back top of your head. Now, you make sure that you can swallow here so you're not jamming your neck. You know, your low, your, the back of your neck is long. It's, um, your chest is your press point, so the middle of your sternum. Imagine someone's finger right there and you're trying to lift your sternum straight up, like due north. You gotta keep your legs strong. Spread your toes, pull them back as you drive your heels forward. Take one more deep, full breath. To release the pose, lift your head just enough to let it slide out and lower your body. And then let your arms open, let your legs relax, and receive. You can finish with whatever poses would feel best to you. I'm going to suggest happy baby. So bend your knees with your um, feet flat and then pull your knees in toward your chest. Now when your knees come in, unlike a happy baby that rolls their bum up in the air, try to keep your bum on the ground. So this will be helpful again for all the hip opening and lotus for lotus posture. Grab hold of your feet or your ankles, your um, big toes, or the outer edges of your feet, which I think is helpful for people who sickle. You want to grab the outer, the pinky toe side of your foot so your foot is flat when it goes up in the air. So you're as if you're squatting on the ceiling. Your feet up in the air, you pull your knees down toward your armpits. And again, a little tug of war. As you draw your knees toward your armpits, draw your tailbone down on the ground to feel deep hip flexion. 
And then maybe start to open, you know, straighten and bend your knees a few times because we also have tortoise pose in this meditative sequence of postures. And tortoise pose is an intense inner thigh and hamstring stretch. So can you move between happy baby to what's called upward angle, opening your legs wide. Again, maybe hold on to your big toes to do that. Maybe that's more available. But keep your feet flat. And then maybe and next time you open into wide angle, hold. If reaching your feet doesn't work, you could have your hands on your on the inside of your calves or maybe the inside of your knees to help yourself to find this opening. We did this earlier standing up, right? We did the wide angled stretch standing up. Try to feel the longest angle possible here. Spread toes, flex your feet. If you have hold of your feet, pull, pull your feet toward you. So you feel a combination of inner thighs and hamstring stretch. Keep your tailbone down. Two more full breaths. And then slowly bend your knees and slide your legs out long. Just a brief, brief Shavasana here. You can open arms in more of a pentacle if that feels okay, which is more of a yin type posture. Your legs open a little wider than your body, uh, maybe wide as your mat and arms overhead or anything that feels comfortable. As you rest here, scan your body, your amazing, magnificent body. Really give the weight of your body to the ground. Let your heels sink and the weight of your legs and your hips and your shoulders, especially your head. Let go of any control of your breath. So again, your body breathes its own rhythm of breath. And observe. And honor yourself for taking time to come to your mat to prepare for the meditative posture sequence um, or meditative posture training course, which will give you tons of sequences. But to close again with the invocation in all the Pranakriya classes, may Brahman or spirit bestow upon us the fruit of knowledge. May we obtain the energy to acquire knowledge and may what we study reveal the truth. May we cherish no ill feeling toward each other. Om, peace, peace, peace. I'll see you in the training. Jai Bhagwan.